What's up guys? Welcome to this next video here which we are talking about what is cryptocurrency and why I see this as the way of the future and why millions of other people do as well. Uh, this is going to be a very basic video to break it down to the simplest form so you guys get an understanding of it, you get excited, then we move into jumping in straight into it here. I'll put a link below this video for a documentary I recommend watching if you want a bit more information uh, about how Bitcoin started, how some of these cryptocurrencies started. Um, it's called Banking on Bitcoin. It's a pretty cool one. It's on YouTube. It's free. Check it out whenever you want to. But let's get started here with the very simplest of what is cryptocurrency. So you can see on this little diagram here that I grabbed off the internet, which explains it pretty well. The left sides are talking about fiat, which is uh, the money we use in our, by our government. So for me, it's Australian dollars. For you, it might be US dollars. It could be Japanese yen, whatever it might be. The right hand side is talking about cryptocurrency. So for example, Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so here, let's have a look at this. So with our, with our money that we have in our banks, it's uh, considered a physical medium of exchange. And it says here it's represented by bills and coins. It is also digital as well. Um, for me personally, I rarely ever carry cash anymore because I spend it too fast. I use my bank card, my credit card. Uh, and realistically, going into my online banking, that number in my bank is purely that, it's just a number. We always look at money as a physical thing in our heads, um, but really it's coming more and more that's gonna become completely digital. Uh, it still does the exact same thing because we believe in it. It still allows us to exchange goods and services for the number in our account or the physical piece of paper that we're holding. Now with cryptocurrency, it's a digital medium of exchange only, which means it's purely digital, There's no, it's completely intangible, there's no physical actual, um, actual money printed for cryptocurrency. Now that can scare people, but again, think about it, how often do you use your bank card that uses a number in your actual uh, banking application or your online banking, and you just use that, it tells you how much you have on the receipt, and you're okay, you know how much money you have, but really it's a number digitalized by the government really into your bank account there. So moving on, banks can produce as much of the currency in your country as they want, which can dilute it, which can make the, the actual dollar value of your um, currency less and less and less the more they print. Um, there's some countries in the world where the actual paper that the money's printed on is worth more than the money itself because it's been so diluted there. Now, that's because they can keep on printing it. With cryptocurrency, there's a limited supply. Every cryptocurrency has something called a market cap, which means that's how much cryptocurrency will ever be released ever. I think Bitcoin's 22, 23 million um, Bitcoin that will ever be released ever. And once they've all been released, what's gonna happen? The supply versus demand is gonna be there, which is gonna push the value up, hopefully. Um, again, I can't tell the future, but this is just genuinely what happens. Uh, when supply and demand's there, when there's a limited resource and people want it and people are using it to exchange, people trust it, which people are already doing right now and we're still very, very early stages of this, the supply demand is gonna go through the roof, which is gonna push the price of Bitcoin up. And the thing with Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency is you can break that Bitcoin down or that cryptocurrency down hundreds and hundreds of times. So right now, Say for Japan, for example, Japan is the first country to, country to accept Bitcoin everywhere. I can go in there and buy a can of Coke uh, with Bitcoin right now. The, big, uh, the can of Coke might be worth 0.001 of a Bitcoin, which might equivalent to $2 Australian, for example. Now, when the supply and demand goes through the roof, once all the Bitcoins are released, the value of Bitcoin is gonna go through the roof. So it might then cost even less of a Bitcoin to buy that can of Coke because uh, of the way it's in, um, the way the um, supply demand's gone up there. So we'll talk a bit more about that later on. Now, with cryptocurrency, it is completely decentralized. That means there's no banks, there's no third parties, there's no Visa, there's no MasterCard, there's no PayPal, there's no one else that has control of your money. The government doesn't have control of your money. No one does. Again, when your money's in a bank account, if that bank account closes down overnight, most likely won't, but if it did, your money will disappear. If the government shuts down the banks, they can, it's gone. You really don't own your money as much as you think you might. That was a hard thing for me to get around, but when you get more and more through this course and you understand this a bit more, you'll see what I mean by that. 
So um, that's one thing, it's completely decentralized, whereas actual physical money uh, or money issued by the government is controlled and is completely centralized by the banks. Now, uh, that in itself is one of the biggest uh, reasons why people love cryptocurrency. Now, that also means is when I send money around the world, it's instant. The way it's built, produced by computers, the way the blockchain works, which we'll talk about in the next video. If I wanted to send a million dollars from Australia to America in Bitcoin, I can do that pretty much instantly. Uh, and there's zero fees attached to it. There's no Visa fees, MasterCard fees, banking fees, international fees, nothing like that. There's no hoops to be jumped through. It doesn't take four or five days like it does when you're doing it with banks. I can do that instantly right now. Secondly, completely anonymous. The only people that will know about that transaction are me and the person I'm sending the, the actual uh, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency to. Um, and whereas, for example, with PayPal, I only learned this other day actually, every time I send money to someone through PayPal or I buy something from PayPal, 600 other entities get that information about that purchase that I just made. Now that really kind of freaked me out a bit and I thought it was very um, crazy that 600 different people or entities get that information about that. And that's probably why when I'm on Facebook now, if I've just bought something like, I don't know, an oven, all of a sudden ovens are popping up in my news feed even though uh, I don't know how the hell they knew I got it there. That could be something that's happening, guys. Uh, it's very, very centralized. Whereas cryptocurrency completely decentralized and completely um, anonymous between you and the person. Now again, it says here, the value is determined by the market and the regulation. And with cryptocurrency, value is determined by supply and demand. So uh, another way I like to explain this as well, if that doesn't make sense to you yet, um, please go over this video again and watch that banking on Bitcoin video that I was telling you guys about. But I wanna show you guys why this is the way of the future in my opinion. And because we've seen it before, we've seen it happen again and again and again in the online space. Now, the first thing is, um, a good example I like to use here is if you guys remember file sharing, when people would share files, share music across the internet, uh, and what that basically did was um, completely destroyed the music industry as we knew it. People didn't go out and buy CDs anymore. People were streaming, people were downloading illegally, people were sharing torrents, doing all that stuff. And the way that would work was, if I wanted to download a song, I would go down something called a torrent, which would basically have thousands of other people send me little bits and pieces of that song, then it would put it together on my computer, and then I'd have that song and share it out to everyone else. If saying that that's if I was downloading music. That's the way file sharing worked. Now that destroyed the whole music industry of people buying CDs and whatnot. Now with cryptocurrency, it's very, very similar in terms of how this is uh, potentially going to either destroy what the banks do right now if they don't jump onto this trend uh, of the blockchain and how cryptocurrency is really so far ahead of what banks are doing right now. Now, what happens, so if I'm gonna send you uh, one Bitcoin, for example, when I send that to your address, which we'll talk about in the future videos, thousands of computers have to solve a code to verify that transaction. Just like thousands of computers were sharing pieces of information of that song for me to get the song, thousands of computers, not one single person, again, remember, with banks, people are involved, cryptocurrency completely decentralized, no human error, thousands of computers are, so are solving this code to verify that transaction's legitimate, it'll get to you very, very quickly, and you instantly have sent that money across or received that money to yourself there. Now, that is in essence what cryptocurrency is and it's going to basically, it's already started to really um, frustrate banks and frustrate people out there that are losing money on transaction fees because there's zero with cryptocurrency. There's not, not, you don't even need a bank account. Like bank accounts cost $5 a month or something to, to maintain. Cryptocurrency wallets, absolutely free, which is why third world countries are really taking a liking to cryptocurrency as well. It's a growing space, guys. I hope that kind of gave you a basic example of what cryptocurrency is. And if you wanna have one final more example here as to why I really believe it's the way of the future and why you guys should think about it in this way as well, think about when everyone used to trade with gold. I wasn't born then, I'm sure most of you weren't either. <laughs> but people used to, used to trade in gold. Uh, and then when banks came out and said, okay, we're gonna actually trade in pieces of paper Everyone would have thought, oh my gosh, why would I want a piece of paper? 
when I could be trading in gold. Gold's worth something. Gold's a physical thing I can hold. I don't want a piece of paper. Now we look at the piece of paper and we go, if we look at a $100 bill, we go, that is worth so much. Why is it worth so much? Because we believe that that piece of paper is worth so much. If I wanted to make this box, if, if we could have said this box was worth $100 and this could be traded for that if we wanted to back in the day. But we chose the piece of paper because it's easy to transport, gold, gold wasn't. And we've put that value on that piece of paper. Now people are putting that value on cryptocurrency and that's why now is the best time to get in because people are just starting to catch on now. People think they've missed, they've missed the chance to get in when you haven't. And when you go through Crypto Suite, through the software, it's going to blow your mind with how it's going to pull you winners after winners after winners and automate this entire process for you. So I hope that made a bit of sense to you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you hit them up in the group. Uh, make sure you watch the Banking on Bitcoin video below and I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to talk about what blockchain is. See you guys then.